guys, if you are interested in watching me craft or uh, talk about life lessons, talk about anything that I'm building, doing, going through, anything like that, uh, long-term sobriety, uh, life lessons, all that good stuff, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, like it, share it with your friends, do all that good shit. Okay, bye. On to the video. All right, guys, so we are back, and I want to start off a, uh, with a quote. So, uh, when the pain of staying the same is greater than the fear of change is when things happen. So, today we are looking at context and uh, gratitude, because I feel like they kind of go hand in hand. Um, while we are doing that and discussing that, I am building out an, an Aldari Wraith Guard for uh, Whitney because she agreed to play Warhammer with me and uh, she picked strong Psyker people and I don't know. I don't know. She likes elves, whatever. So um, I'm building these and uh, I was kind of talking about contacts or... I was thinking about contacts while I was doing this. Uh, to give you a little background about what happened, I live here in Nashville and um, just outside of Nashville, my actual office got hit with that tornado uh, that happened back in, oh God, what was it? November, December, it seemed like so far ago. It was right after Thanksgiving. And I had drove out there and, uh, you know, I just kind of sat on the lake and uh, things were very peaceful. And I was very grateful for where I was at. And that kind of ties into um, how I was and um, all of my relapses. You know, uh, while truthfully, I can probably safely say that, you know, I just wanted to drink or whatever, but um, I had forgotten where I was and where I came from in this. Uh, and that that's what sparked the context subject was thinking about gratitude. And so let me ask you this. How do you know you're in heaven if you've never been to hell? You know, how do you know you're in a good spot or a bad spot? Well, that's because of context. That's because your brain is comparing the past experiences with what you've gone through, what you're going through now, and is drawing as much conclusions as possible to it. You know, um, if everything went uh, according to your plan, how would you know that you're even happy? You know, um, I, I see this argument on uh, a bunch of recovery forums, like all the goddamn time. And they're like, oh, how can there be a God if he lets, you know, innocent babies die or, you know, this or that. It's like, okay, really? Well, has any of it happened to you? No. Okay. Are you doing anything to fix it? No. I'm just complaining about it. 
And it's like, shut the fuck up. And that's where I'm getting at is like contacts, man. Like you, you've got to, you got to be keeping that mindful. So like when I was in my early, early days of long-term sobriety, I mean, we're talking, um, November, December, 2022. Yeah. It hasn't been that long that I've been sober and I started jumping out and doing this, but I was depressed like all the goddamn time. And it was mainly because I didn't have anything going for me. I couldn't do anything like work. I just had a stupid YouTube channel and a bunch of junk laying around the house. And I just had to make do and entertain myself. You know, I didn't really do much with that uh, YouTube channel leaning up to it. I had all the intentions in the world of it until I got drunk. But, uh, that, that was it. You know, I started, um, I started walking. I started, uh, finagling, um, figuring out ways to make something that didn't look like it fit, uh, fit. And that's ultimately how I got into, uh, diorama building and, um, trash bashing as they call it, I guess. But I'm making dioramas out of like everyday shit that, um, people usually throw away. Uh, but during those times, it felt like I was in purgatory because I couldn't do anything um, other than little miscellaneous projects around the house or, um, you know, whatever chores I was given that I could do. And... As things got better, I um, got a job, and uh, I remember this like pretty evident to this day of feeling like somebody was picking on me. All right, sorry, I had to get a drink. I was so thirsty, and all we had was fucking Dr. Pepper Zero. God, it's gross. Uh, but that that's that's what I, I was. I, I was I was starting to work. Um, and I started feeling down on myself, you know, like everybody was picking on me. Um, I was fucking up all the time. Um, I I was reading, you know, recovery stories. I was hanging out on uh, crippling alcoholics to try and keep the horror fresh in my face so I wouldn't go back. I ended up getting banned from them because I wanted to start like this uh, Pokemon uh, Scarlet and Violet League where we would like all battle each other and play each other. Anyways, they ended up banning me for that and then uh, Stop Drinking banned me for... Uh, insinuating that somebody should accept responsibility for their actions. And they told me I was slut shaming. And I was like, well, she knew he was married and she slept with him and we're coddling her. Like, it's kind of shitty. Anywho, um, you know, I, I had spent Christmas alone with my dog. My family went and hung out with uh, whoever they wanted to hang out with. You know, nobody really wanted to be around me. And as my condition and things improved, uh, people started wanting to be around me. Uh, by that point, the ones that were pretty prominent in my life, uh, by my own accord, you know, they had to get cut. Um, not like literally cut, but I, they got downgraded in their statuses in my eyes just by how they acted. 
Um, and they tried to, you know, change the narrative, all this bunch of stuff. And, you know, that works when you're blackout drunk and you don't really remember what's going on. But it doesn't really work when you're completely sober and your mind's like a steel trap. So um, I started calling a duck a duck and I'm, I'm moving past it. Uh, as I was going along, I started uh, adopting new morals to guide my life um, and keep me in that, that state of mind of being grateful for where I am. Uh, this was, or this YouTube channel, this blog is my way of giving back to everybody who had to put up with me. Um, so cutting back to practicing contacts and gratitude on it, uh, with, with contacts, you know, keep a journal, rate your days on a scale of one to 10, you know, one being riding in the streets, 10 being a parade in your honor, uh, and, and honestly rate your day. And keep doing that every day. Do it for the first 90 days. I can tell you that in uh, 90 days of being sober, my mood improved uh, at least 20%, if not more. Um, from And overall, in each month, I gained... 20 to 15% more and overall happiness and having a good day. Uh, another thing that, uh, that really kind of helped me along was just trying to be nice. You know, thank the cashier, ask them how their day is, hold the door for someone. Uh, I like to put my bare feet on actual ground to help center me whenever I'm feeling some type of way. Like, when's the last time you felt grass on your feet? You know? And while you're doing that, you know, you can go back and look at your journals. Look at how far you've come. Look at how awesome you're doing. You know? Is it perfect? Absolutely but fucking not. But it's miles above where you were and how you were, you know. Um, I don't have that crippling anxiety of just impending doom coming down on me. Uh, I have an overall sense that shit's going to work out and I'm going to be all right. And life's going to go on. And... It's gonna be okay, you know. That's that was a that was a big uh, thing for me. And just to not make this all about context and me preaching on anything and stuff like that. If you guys have made it this far, Whitney chose purple. I don't know why. I think it actually looks kind of dope now that like I'm looking at it. But uh, I was just like, oh. Uh, uh. And funny story, uh, my mom asked me uh, what Whitney's favorite color was, and I knew I was painting all of her army purple, and I was like, it's probably purple. Nope, not purple at all. But, <laughs> it, um, you know, it, having that humbleness, having that gratitude, and wanting to be there to just help people, not for your own ego and feeling better about just helping people, but just being out and involved in life and seeing what all life has to offer can really add um, a lot of gratitude to your life. I highly encourage if um, you are struggling with any of it in the morning when you wake up, or actually, you know what? My therapist told me this um, when I was struggling it. 
uh, she had me write down um, several things that I liked about myself and tape it to my bathroom mirror. And I read those as I brushed my teeth and got ready. I didn't believe them. I didn't. I mean, hell, it was like two years before I started to believe them. And that was because I didn't put any work behind it. I read it. It, it was more like that um, notification that you get on your phone that's like, hey, do you want to update your software? And I'm like, mm, no, no, I'm good. And then I'm getting mad because my apps are crashing and stuff. And it's like, update your software, dude. Anyhow, um, I practice gratitude and I practice context and I keep them together. And I keep them together. I rate my days. I go through um, life trying to do better and help better and uh, remember that, you know, even a low bottom drunk like me can ask a cashier how their day is going or hold the door for somebody or ask if anybody needs help with anything. You know, it doesn't take much and more often than not, they're going to say no, but at least you put in the effort. And with that, um, I think I'm just going to cut to these sweet, sweet, sweet fucking action shots. All right. Bye.